68074, equal potential bonding of the hydro massage bathtub. An 8 gauge or copper or larger copper equal attention bonding conductor isn't required to be connected to any remote panel board service equipment or electrode. When you have a hot tub, I'm sorry, when you have a hydro massage bathtub, the requirements on bonding, some people think that you're supposed to take your pump motor and you're supposed to take it and maybe run it here and run it there. And it's just, this, I mean, there aren't many rules that tell you this is what you're not supposed to do. Usually they tell you what you're supposed to do. Now, actually, I'm going to go to 68074. I'm going to pop up my code here. And let's do it real quick here. 680.74. And let's read what that actual rule is. Now, you're taking a look at the NEC in the 2011 code, the electronic version. And let's just kind of move that over here. Let's see what it has to say here. Okay. All metal piping systems and all grounded metal parts in contact with the recirculating water shall be bonded together using a solid copper bonding conductor, insulate cover to bear, not smaller than, than 8 gauge. So we're talking about metal piping in contact with the water. Well, I don't think there's many hydrogen-sized bathtubs that have any kind of metal piping. You guys agree with that? that that's, that's, I don't think that's what it says. What is, is it? Metal, metal piping systems. There, there's two things you have to bond together if you have them. One is metal piping systems. Oh, me I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Right. Your metal piping systems right. in all grounded metal parts in contact with the circulating water pipe shall be bonded together using a solid copper bonding jumper. Okay, so if I have a house that has copper plumbing, it's a metal water piping system, then I got to bond that metal water piping system with an 8 gauge solid conductor to shall be bonded uh, the bondage jumper should be connected to the terminals on the motor so i got to get the metal water piping system in this house or rather not a house it could be whatever the hydro size bath to look at it to the pump motor all right that's to the terminal of the pump motor that's intended for this purpose well, since nobody has metal water piping systems in the house, then I won't be doing that. The bonding jumper shall be required. Well, I don't have to read about the bonding jumper be required because I don't have to do that. The A gauge wire larger. Well, I don't have to read that because I'm not doing that. Okay. And then you don't have to connect anything. Okay, so far, so far I'm not doing anything. Then it goes on the 8 gauge or larger solid copper conductor shall be, as, shall be long enough to terminate on a replacement non-double insulated pump motor and shall be terminated to the equipment grounding conductor of the branch circuit of the motor when a double insulated circulating motor is used. So what do you think that's saying, Ryan? I'm not running anything from the water pipe to the motor, but now this is talking about a double insulated motor. Well, I I, it, this is one of the stranger code rules I've seen in some time. That's why I, I was you. kind of throwing it to you because. Oh, <laughs> no, I mean, thank you. I appreciate yeah, like, that. What the heck is so, that trying to say? What, what, I, what I'm reading is that if your house is plumbed in copper and you're using a double insulated motor, gen, you don't have to do anything in previous editions. Now, if your house is plumbed in copper and you're using a double insulated motor, you're going to bond. You're going to take one wire, connect it to the copper piping. And then you're going to run that conductor over near the motor, but you're not going to connect it to the motor because the motor is double insulated. But here's where it gets really absurd. What do you do with the other end of this conductor? I would think you coil it up in a ball and you don't do anything with it. But now it says you've got to actually connect it to the equipment ground of the double insulated motor. So I've actually, I guess I have to Get and into the receptacle itself. box? No, no. Isn't that what it says? That's not what it says. It says that you have to connect the source end of it to the branch circuit of the motor. What is the source end of it? What does that mean? All right, well, the, okay, the, the line end then. You what connect up the line end, and you're right. You leave the load end coiled. Okay, so you've got the motor. one end of the wire goes to the copper piping. Right. The other end of it, you're saying you coil it up, but I, I, I'm seeing it, and, and <clears throat> shall be terminated to the equipment grounding conductor of the branch circuit mm -hmm. of the motor when I'm using a double <coughs> insulated pump. I think you that says you gotta, I, think you, I think that says you have to drill the plastic box that has the receptacle in it 
All right, let me read it and again. And connect it to the okay. number 12 right. line. Let, let's see if we can kind of yeah. slowly I'll, work it out. I, I, I'm with I you. I, I think it's a bizarre let, code let's, rules I've seen in a long time. Let's start at the beginning. 68074 says, all metal piping systems shall be. Okay, so we're talking about you got to bond it together, and it tells you the size of the wire, how to do it, and the whole thing. And then it goes on and talks about maybe we can break this up into parts, one, two, three, or even prints. Or, okay. or delete it. Or delete it. Okay. It says, <laughs> then it goes on, it says, the 8 gauge wire or larger solid copper bonded jumper shall be long enough to terminate on a replacement non double insulated pump motor. Okay, that's if that's I one have one. a water pipe. Right? Right, yeah. Then I was now this bringing it over to the motor to say, well, listen, you got the metal water piping system, you're bringing it to the motor since you got a double insulated motor, okay? Mm -hmm. Then just bring it from the water pipe over to the motor, okay? Long enough to terminate on a replacement non double insulated pump motor, right? And shall be terminated to the equipment grounding conductor. Of the, of the branch, branch circuit, circuit of the motor. Now we kind of like well, when a double what, insulated what, pump is used. When a double insulated pump is used. So, so it, it looks like we take the water piping system. If you use a double insulated motor, mm -hmm. you bond the water piping system to the equipment grounding, grounding conductor, conductor of the yeah. branch circuit yeah. of the motor. You've got to drill into the blue plastic box that the receptacle sits in, the and you've got to connect because you can't you can't connect it to the frame of the motor. <coughs> no, no. You, no, oh. because it's double insulated. You've got to leave a loop so there for the next order, though. to somewhere. How are you going to connect that to the equipment ground of the branch circuit? The well, only way you can do it... It's an eight-gauge solid conductor. Right. It's you, not easy to be able to connect it to that circuit you, equipment ground You've literally ground got to drill into that box and run that conductor and connect it to your equipment grounds of the branch circuit serving the serving the motor. Right. Well, remember... Yes, John? But haven't we already bonded the copper water piping inside the house at another point somewhere mm -hmm. because of a 250 requirement? Mm -hmm. 25104A yeah, says you take so the metal water piping system right. and you bond it to the electrical service equipment or the ground and neutral service conductor, the grounding electrode conductor, grounding electrode. We already did it, so why are we doing it again? Okay. Remember I said the definition of insanity? Well, it's broken into two parts. It's 68026, <laughs> I think it was B7. And it's 680.74. Mm -hmm. Crazy. <laughs> One second. Let me go back here. Remember I told you, don't do swimming pools? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah. we don't even know what the heck they're talking about. If you go out and do a swimming pool, a hydroplasized bathtub, you don't think that some inspector wants you to drive a ground rod next to that baby? Come on. This is crazy. A hundred and something years, and we still don't even know how to do a swimming pool. Yes. I told you Article 680 was so confusing. You're right, and you said, and you did say that, and, and you said that you really focused in the last 15, 20 years on Article 250 and 680. And I thought I was getting somewhere until about five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's when, all right, we're going to move on. But you know what? I can tell you one thing. A lot of us and a lot of people will be looking at this, and, and the problem is this. You say, well, I don't say what, you got to realize. Article 680 guys are not the guys that are in Article 250. Grounding requirement, requirement, grounding and bonding requirements in 250 is in Code Panel 5. When you get into all these other articles and they get into some crazy grounding and bonding requirements, I mean, you want to talk about grounding and bonding, go to Carnival Circus Affairs. They got some crazy, crazy things going inside there. You know what I mean? Even uh, now the photovoltaic guys, the solar guys, they're starting to get it together. They're doing a lot, they're doing a lot better. So you got to realize, Article 250 guys, I'm not going to say they're bored. But I think they're getting bored because they've done such a good job on Article 250. They start thinking, let's take a look at Article Chapter Seven or Chapter Eight. Let's take a look at swimming pools. I think you're going to see a lot of top code guys that really understand grounding and bonding. They're going to be approaching these other code panels and they're going to solve this problem and get back get better. So it's going to take some time.